Let's stand all over the building as we go to God in prayer. And if you don't sense his presence, he's certainly here right now. In fact, you ought to just be messed up by Jesus right now. Thank you, Father, for your presence in this place. Thank you for your word. <clears throat> Thank you that you are not dead. You are alive and you live forevermore. Bless you on this Resurrection Sunday. We make your name large in this place. There's nobody like you. And I just want to say thank you. I really appreciate you. God, I don't deserve it. I couldn't earn it. But you died anyway. Bless your people and may they have a fresh encounter with you this Easter. May it not be business as usual. Let them feel the presence of your Holy Spirit. Let them sense your power. Now stand in my body, speak with my mouth. Save and change. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give our, first our young dancer a hand. Let's give all of our young kids a hand. The scriptures and Let's give our choir a hand. Thank you so much. You may be seated all over this building, but you know, Real, real, I watched, I was close up on little Leah and I saw a tear coming out of her eye. And I want to say this. See, sometimes as younger, older and younger people, millennials and other people, we know how to perform. And yet sometimes our performance override our heart. Jesus is not interested in good performance. He's interested in pure hearts. And I'm like Sister Webster, I'm so moved by our young people who also gave scriptures. And I want to say this to you. Nothing else is going to keep them. In case you don't know it, our young kids are being attacked on every strata. And some of them are not even sure about Jesus and what he can do. I want to be clear, there's no confusion about Jesus. He can save you. He can change you. And if you just live for him, he'll do for you what you can't do for yourself. And so today, I just want to talk quickly. I'm tired. I've been speaking all week. And so I want to talk quickly from the hope at the empty tomb. I want to talk about hope at the empty tomb. And I will take different captions from the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And then I will hold up in front of you the supplemental gospel, which is the gospel of John. Now, Ryan, y'all make sure, and the good musicians, y'all stay close, because I'm going to be out soon. <laughs> Here's what we have to understand. Well, we have to understand that the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, gave different excerpts about Jesus. And the supplemental gospel... John, John, he wrote to whosoever will to fill in what he thought Matthew, Mark, and Luke missed. But they all are saying the same thing. Mark will say one angel. The two other gospels will say two angels. They reach a definitive conclusion that it was angels. Jesus did stay in the grave for three days. 
According to Jewish customs, Jesus was put into the grave before the Sabbath. And that means that he was in the grave according to their calendar and timetable. It was different from ours. He was in the grave Friday before Sabbath. From, from Friday to Saturday, that's another Sabbath. And Jews would normally start Sunday morning at the end of the Sabbath on Saturday. So he stayed in the grave according to Jewish calendar and timetable. Matter of fact, it wasn't, you know, even though it dawned toward the, the, the early uh, day, uh, one, one writer says that we don't know when he got up. But what we do know is that he got up. Today, I want to talk about hope at the empty tomb. And when you think about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, here's what resurrection really means to me. Resurrection means that the worst things is never the last thing. That the worst thing that happened to you is never the last thing that happened to you. As bad as Good Friday was, that worst thing was never the last thing. And sometimes you come to church and you deal with life. Wasn't anything worse than Good Friday. But here's what I love about God. As bad as it was, the whipping, the beating, the piercing, the worst thing, it's not the last thing. We're sitting here because Sunday morning came. As we deal with hope of the empty tomb, Mark chapter 16, verse number 3, literally says that there was a dialogue about who was going to move the stone away. And it said that, and they said among themselves, who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? I want y'all to know that this was not a happy occasion. They went to the tomb to view a dead Jesus. It was, Ma it was Mary Magdalene. It was Mary, another Mary. It was Salami. And as they went to the tomb, they were sad because they was going to see the one they loved. It was sad because in Matthew 27, they had stood by the cross and watched him die. They had stood by the cross and watched this good man who never harmed anybody die like a criminal. And you know how it is when your loved one is innocent and all they tried to do was help people and somebody come along and lie on them and conjure up plans against them and then hang them up in front of the whole world to make an open shame of them. It wasn't a pretty picture. And you got to look and read this because some of us are so used to people talking about the resurrection of Jesus. We overlook these women who loved him and went to the tomb and thought that they were going to see his body for the last time. I want to say this to you today. It said that they dialogued about who was going to roll the stone away. Today you're here, and there may be some dialogue about the death of one of your loved ones. It may not be who's going to roll the stone away, but it could be how could God let something this bad happen to this good person? And there's a, a dialogue about it. Maybe there's a dialogue about some stone 
that's now dealing with your family that's in the way and you don't know how to handle it. The conversation with these women who love Jesus, who hung by, was who was going to roll the stone away. Let me give you a, a brief application right on this scripture. What I love about it is even though they talked about it and dialogued about it, they kept on walking. And so many of us, y'all, would allow stones to stop us from going to see Jesus. Today, many of us will talk about the stone, get paralyzed by the stone, and stop walking toward Jesus who was going to make sure the stone got removed. I want to say this to you, and I'm moving quickly. No matter how much dog dialogue there is about who's going to roll away the stone, I just want to encourage you that if stones are in your life, you keep moving toward Jesus, and he'll sooner or later handle the stone that's in your way. These ladies love Jesus, and, and it's really kind of interesting to me because they could allow the stone to deter them from getting close to Jesus. That's what we do. We, we find stones of other people. We find stones of our own. We find stones that really, that, that the devil set in our way. And we let those stones detour us from going to see Jesus. But not only was there dialogue on the way to the tomb, there was discouragement when they got to the tomb. In Luke 24, John 20 and 11, in verse 315, it says, And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shiny garments. Now, what you got to understand is when you back up to this verse, it really you got to read verse number three to understand what they were perplexed about in verse number four. When you look at Luke 24, verse number three, here it is. Stick with me. I'm going somewhere. Here's what he says. And I just think that this is so profound. Verse number three says, then they went. Watch this. Then they went and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus, and it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garment. And then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was in Galilee. Listen, there is discouragement at the tomb. And let me tell you why there's discouragement at the tomb because Matthew 27 verse 61 says these women saw him die. Matthew chapter 27 verse 61 says that they saw Joseph lay Jesus in a tomb. But here's the real issue y'all. When they, when they got there the body of Jesus was not there. I want y'all to come here. It's like y'all taking a body to the funeral home and you know that your family member's body left the morgue and went to the funeral home. And then when you get to the funeral home, you come to find out that the body ain't there. Let me tell you something. Some of y'all won't get to scary. Some of y'all will outright cuss. Because let me say this to you. I'm trying to contemporize it so y'all can get it. These were people who loved him. These were people who saw him die. And I want to say this, by the way, parenthetically, Jesus did die. Yeah, yeah, he did die. See, here's what we got to make sure we don't do. Some of us will celebrate the cradle, but we can't handle the cross. According to the scriptures, y'all, Jesus did die. And I want to say this because we need to understand that the angel told them, remember what he said. You know, there's so many people, Brady, or walking around talking about he didn't really die. Uh, he kind of went into a swoon on the cross and blacked out. But when they put him in a cold cave, and by the way, I've been into that cave in Israel where they think Jesus' body was. They're not sure, but I've been there. But they said when they put him into the cold cave, somehow his body 
body resuscitated and he walked out on his own. Well, I know that he was God, but he was also man. And as man, y'all, he had he was beaten. He had lost blood. How even if Jesus resuscitated, would he have had enough strength to push away a stone that they had sealed because he was man? That didn't even happen, y'all. Jesus did die. And I want to say this to those of you who are here. The, the death of Jesus is more than a cartoon story. The death of Jesus is more than Wakanda that y'all go to see at the box office in movies. The death of Jesus is more than a superhero. Jesus is not Superman. He ain't Batman. He ain't Spider-Man. He ain't a fable. The Roman record said that Jesus of Nazareth was died, died and he was buried and crucified. I got to say this to y'all because some of us are trying to make Jesus like some superhero. He ain't a superhero. He's a super savior that died for the sins of the world and he's more than your comic book story. And I need to say this to y'all. Jesus is a fact in history that the, he's the only one that changed the calendar. After he got up, they had to change the calendar to A.D. any of dominium in the year of our Lord and the reason why they done that because Jesus got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand but that was discouragement that was discouragement because they were not sure and they didn't understand and they were perplexed and I love what the angel said why are you seeking the living among the dead here's the problem why so many of us are down and so many of us are discouraged because we got a distorted view of the resurrection let me say this to y'all now that Jesus got up the angel called him the living amongst the dead. You know the only thing the graveyard is for me and you? The graveyard for me and you is just an exit to an entrance to eternal life where we go to be with Jesus and the only thing they put there is our bodies because our spirits go to be with Jesus. But they were discouraged. They were discouraged because they had forgot the scriptures. Now I want to say this in John 20 verse 11 it said but Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping and asked she was wet, as she wept stooped down and looked into the tomb. Listen it says that uh, John says that Mary came back. He said because she, she you know Mary Magdalene loved him and she came back and here she is weeping. I want y'all to follow me with y'all minds this morning. Here she is weeping. We're going to get you back to your emotions in just a second. But she followed him weeping. I need to tell y'all this. You see, those who, be, those who are forgiven much, they love much. Mary Magdalene in Luke 8, chapter 2, she had demons in her. And Jesus cast the demons out of her. And you know what? She fell in love with Jesus. Let me say this. She came back to this tomb. And what got me was, there she is, discouraged and weeping. But you know what? Then said, when she stooped down to look in the tomb, then said, they, here's the angels to her. Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now, when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus. Watch me now. The, the, the discouragement at the tomb turned into a discovery at the tomb. I'm going somewhere with this. Hey, she was discouraged because she was weeping. She said, they took away my Lord and I don't know where they have laid him. Y'all got to understand these women's plight right here. They was discouraged because, you know, to add insult to injury, you already killed him and he was, he was not guilty. You already killed him after he had healed folk. You already killed a man and all he tried to do was go around doing goods. You know, they had, they, they, listen, they had a right to be uh, discouraged and they had a right to be upset, but they should have remembered the scripture. Here's what they was really saying, y'all, when you look at it. Who, who, listen, I'm discouraged because I don't see the body of the one who had fed 5,000. He was a good man. I, I came here and I'm a little discouraged. 
discouraged because I'm looking for the body of the one who gave Bartimaeus sight. He never done anything but help people and I can't find his body. Uh, they were discouraged because they came there looking saying, I'm looking for the body of the one who brought Lazarus back from the dead and now I can't find his body. You got to understand how they were feeling. I I'm looking for the one who made the man at the pool whole and now we can't find his body. Jesus was not just a good man. He was a good savior, but they didn't see it yet. And because they didn't see it, they were wondering what happened to his body. And you know what? If your loved one, if you know that they went to the funeral home and you come to their way and you can't find them, you're going to be discouraged. But here's what I like. When you keep looking for Jesus, you will discover that Jesus is not dead, but he's alive. And let me say this. Here's why a lot of y'all have not met Jesus personally. It says that she stooped down and when she stooped down she looked in and the angel start talking to her and after the angel start talking to her then Jesus stood there and he started talking. Here's what I want to say to y'all and I got to move quickly on Easter Sunday morning. You know why a lot of y'all ain't really discovered Jesus in your discouragement and in your doubt because you won't stand still long enough for Jesus to show up. Talk to me up in here. You know another reason why a lot of y'all won't discourage y'all a lot of y'all don't put no strength into learning about Jesus. Mary stood, but then she stooped because some things you can't see about Jesus when you're standing up. But then other things, other times, you got to stoop down. And I tell you, when you stoop down, Jesus will show up and he will call your name. Let me say it real quickly. She discovered Jesus. How did she discover Jesus? Jesus called her name. Now, I want to say this to y'all. I got to move. I told you I'm about out your way. My, my lungs ain't going to hold up that long. I need to say this. Neither is my sinuses. But I need to say this to you. How many of you really stood, stood, stood still long enough for him to call your name? Now, I want to say this quickly. You know, here's the, here's the discovery of Easter. The discovery of Easter, number one, that he's alive. Here's the second discovery of Easter. He'll call your name. Now, now some of y'all missed it. He said, Mary, whenever Jesus shows up, he'll call you by name. He says, Mary. She looked at him. She said, Rabboni. She said, teacher. Then she wanted to fall and she wanted to worship him. You know why a lot of y'all can't get excited about Jesus? Because a lot of y'all ain't been still long enough this week to even talk to him. It's dangerous to try to celebrate Easter publicly and you ain't talk to Jesus none privately. You see, here's what I love about Jesus. I'm glad that he showed up to Matthew. We got his account. I'm glad that he showed up to Mark. We have Mark's account. I'm glad that he showed up to Luke. We have Luke's account. I'm glad that he showed up to John. We have John's account. But you know what more? What I'm glad about more than anything? That he shows up to me in my life one Sunday morning on 1059 North King. Jesus showed up and he changed my life. I tell you, whenever Jesus show up, he'll call you by name. Some of y'all ain't listening to me. I said, when he ever shows up, he'll call you by name. Now, have you ever wondered why he showed up to Mary? Because some of y'all, I'm going to tell y'all why he showed up to Mary. Because some of y'all don't love him like you say you love him. Jesus showed up men to a woman. Talk to me, Melvin. He showed up to a woman. And I know a lot of us want to be little women. We want to play women down. But Jesus showed up, Sister Johnson, to this woman. You know why? Because he knew that this woman's heart was right with him. I want to say this to y'all this Easter. Jesus know y'all heart. And he knows how you feel about him. And it's hard to try to come in here and play church on Easter Sunday when you have not been looking at Jesus ever since last Easter. If you have been looking at him, he will show up. And whenever he shows up he brings excitement to your life that nobody else have to bring he said Mary turned to him and said Rabona there's the doubt about the tomb there's the discouragement at the tomb there is the discovery that Jesus is alive and then there's the delight that he brings now I'm gone 
But, but you know, Jesus will bring you delight. But before he brings you delight, he sometimes changes your direction. He told Mary to, now Mary, watch this. Now that I'm alive, watch this, y'all, watch this. Asia, he calls your name, but then he tells you to do something. See, see here's what y'all got to understand. Some of y'all just want him to call your name, but you don't want to do nothing for him. He, he called her name, and then he told her, now I want you to do something. Don't, 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 walk away from, don't walk away on me on this one. He said, Mary, he called her name. She fell down and she worshiped. But then he said, now I want you to do something. Here's what, here's what people want to do. They want to come to church, and, and they want to call his name. And he want them to call their name. And, but then they don't want to do anything after he calls their name. He called her name, and then he said, now Mary, calling your name and delivering you is not all that I want you to do. And see, here's what y'all got to understand. Jesus never just got up for you to clap. He never just got up for you to celebrate. He wants you to clap. He wants you to celebrate. But here's what he said. Now go tell my disciples. He said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go tell my disciples that I am alive. And guess what? Me and I go before them into Galilee. I want y'all to hear me this morning. He gives them a new direction to go tell my disciples. Watch this, y'all. Yes, he wants you to clap. Yes, he wants you to, to, be, to, to be contrite about the cross. He wants you to celebrate his goodness. But let me say something to you. Easter don't mean anything to you if you ain't going and telling anybody, if you don't go tell somebody after you leave church that Jesus is alive and what he's done for you. Okay, can I turn it down a little bit? Let me say it again. Easter doesn't mean anything to you unless you go tell somebody what Jesus have done for you. Let me say it again. What's all of your singing and all of your clapping? We need all of that. But what's all of that coming to church and putting on your nice clothes and then after you leave, then you go and all you talk about is how good the ham is, how good the lamb is, how good the turkey is, how good the double eggs is, how good the chocolate is. And as a matter of fact, none of that has anything to do with Easter. Jesus said, go tell my disciples, listen, that I am alive and I go before them in to Galilee. Here's what I love about Jesus. He's always willing to go before us. Tell them that I'm alive and meet me in Galilee. I think I lost some of y'all on that one. Look at somebody say, hey. No, no, look at somebody say, hey. Did you hear him? Easter, come on, Easter doesn't mean anything to us If we don't, tell somebody. I'm going to land it in a minute. But when was the last time you told somebody that Jesus is alive and he's still calling your name? Somebody ought to hear me this morning. Uh, Pastor Allen normally sometimes say, I'm glad. He's still calling my name. See, see, I, I need to say this to y'all because what I'm learning now, not y'all, not y'all, but I got to say this, and I want to say this publicly, and y'all make sure y'all keep this on live stream. We're, we're dealing with a generation, y'all, that is somehow trying to dumb him down. They're trying to dumb down him being alive. They're trying to dumb down, y'all, him being the savior of the world. So, so, so let me tell y'all this. Look. Christians, y'all need to read our Bibles, not y'all, but we need to read our Bibles so that we can say definitively without any contradiction that Jesus is alive and that he got up from the grave. Now, Lord, I need to tell y'all something. Jesus was alive, and when he got up from the grave, when he told Mary, Mary saw his body visually. She saw his body visually. Y'all hear me? She saw him visually. She didn't see a ghost. She didn't see a spirit. She saw Jesus' body in that graveyard visually. Visually. But not only did she see Jesus' body in that graveyard visually, watch this, Ryan, she saw Jesus' body physically. She saw his body physically. How do I know? Because she wanted to touch him. She wanted to touch him. She saw his body physically. Let me say another thing, y'all. Jesus got her from the grave because she saw his body clearly. She saw his body clearly. I'm trying to help you. Think with me with your mind. We're going to get in the back to your emotions in just a minute. Think with me with your mind. He saw, she saw his body visually. She saw his body 
body clearly. She saw his body visually. She saw his body clearly. And she saw his body physically. And you know what, y'all? What, what, what motivated Mary to go back and get excited is because she seen him clearly. She seen him visually. She seen him clearly. She seen him visually. And she seen him physically. Listen, if you go to the tomb of Muhammad, he's still there. And you can't see him clearly. And you can't see him visually. And you can't see him physically. If you go to the tomb of Buddha, he's still there. You can't see him clearly. You can't see him visually. And you can't see him physically. If you take away Muhammad from Islam, Islam can still go on because it's based on words. If you take away Buddha from Buddhism, Buddha can still go on because it's based on practice but if you take away Jesus from the Christian we don't have no story to tell I'm here because I seen him spiritually I see him clearly I see him through the scriptures and I bid you good I bid you I'm done I bid you a good morning hope at the empty tomb. The doubt, the dialogue, the discouragement, the delight, as my wife said, that's good news. I don't know how many stones that you have in your life, but somebody needs to know that Jesus can take the stone away. Some of y'all came here this morning, I'm, I'm done, to hear me preach. Jesus was the greatest preacher that ever preached. And you know what I love about him? Not only did he send them away with a delight, Jesus, that's why you can't say the seven last sayings of Jesus. Because Jesus is still talking. I said Jesus is still talking. Matter of fact, he's talking so much. He said, you know, he said, look, all power in heaven and earth. Is in my hands. Go ye therefore and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Listen, they had their discouragement, they had their doubt, but Jesus is still making declarations. You know why? That he can make declarations because all power in heaven and earth is in his hand. See, I know that some of y'all love to worship him with your emotions, but you can't let him handle your mind because some of us got some stones that are in our way and we don't know how the stones are going to get out the way. I tell you how the stones are going to get out your way. All power. I said all power. And heaven and earth is in his hand. I bid you, huh? Good morning. You say, well, pastor, there's a whole lot of folk who have a whole lot of power. Uh, the Black Panther had a whole lot of power. Uh, underdog had a whole lot of power. Superman had a whole lot of power. Batman have a whole lot of power. They had some power, but they just made up as the reason why you and I are here today. Because a lot of us have experienced this power. What type of power huh, do he have? He has one there is a working power and is only found uh, in the blood of the lamb has anybody ever been uh, washed in the blood of the lamb free from all of your sins given a new beginning that's what type of power that he has He's got enough power to forgive me and give me a second chance. Is there anybody in this choir has ever been forgiven and gave a second chance? Is there anybody in this room that knew that they were on their way to hell, but they got another second chance? This is what I like about it. Black folk blood can't save you. White folk blood can't save you. But nothing can wash away your sin but the blood of Jesus. He's got enough power to make you whole again and some of y'all say well that ain't nothing I know some other folk got power to do that the doctors can give you a blood transfusion and they can give you power let me tell you something I don't care how many transfusions you get from the doctor the only person that can wash away your sins is the blood of 
Uh, you say, well, pastor, that's all well and good. That's for this life. Let me tell you another type of power he has, Eric. Uh, uh, Eric, I tell you what he has, Eric. He's got power over death, hell, in the grave. I ought to have a witness somewhere in here. He has power over death, hell, in the grave. And that's why I serve him. He has power over death, hell, in the grave. Abraham didn't have no power. Death got Abraham. Isaac didn't have no power. Death got Isaac. As great as Moses was, he could depart the Red Sea. But death got Moses too. As great as Elijah was, Elijah, death got a hold of Elijah too. But John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus Christ, death got a hold of him too. But one Friday, death met his match on a hill far, far away called Calvary. Death put his hands on Jesus Christ. He stuck his bony finger out. They nailed him to a cross. They took him down. They put him in the grave. Friday, death called grave. And death said, hey, grave, let's have a conversation. I got him. Can you keep him? And grave told death yes I kept Abraham yes I kept Isaac yes I kept Jacob yes I kept Joseph death called him back on day two he said yes Moses is still there yes John the Baptist is still there but death said to Gray I understand that but they've been talking about this man they've been writing about this man there's a prophecy about this man that God would not leave this man sold in hell and then death told Gray have you heard lately I had Lazarus and Lazarus was dead and I thought I had it but this man showed up and this man brought Lazarus back to life but Graves said that's when he was living he's dead now but then all of a sudden early Sunday morning Jesus got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hand he looked at death and he said oh death where is thy sting oh grave where is thy victory I ought to be able to get a witness in this house that Jesus still has power over death hell and the grave and it does not matter what you're going through our God has the power over death hell and the grave is there anybody in this room that knows that our God still has the power over death, hell, and the grave. Oh, oh, death. Oh, death. Where's thy sting? Oh, death. Where's thy sting? And then Jesus stepped up. He said, I'm he. Oh, yeah. I am alive. I live forevermore. Not only can I handle death, not only can I handle grave, but I got the keys. I'm done, but you know, some of y'all come to church to be entertained. I ain't trying to entertain nobody. I believe this book. You know how I know he's alive? I talked to him last night. And I talked to him this morning. And I just wonder, is he alive in your life? You know? I've been walking with him a long time now. And he's the best thing that ever happened to me. He's been my friend. I said he's been my friend. He's been the one who wiped the tears from my eyes. He's been my burden bearer. He's not only my savior, he's my Lord. 
And when I'm at my lowest moment, he comes and he sees about me. He's alive. You ought to get to know him today. He only sung one hymn that we know. But yet all the hymns can't describe him. He only wrote one time that we know about. But all the libraries can't contain him. He's an anthem in one verse. He's a fixer of all my faults. He's an eraser of all my errors. You ought to get to know him today. You ought to not come to church on Easter. You ought to not come to church on Easter and just act like he's not alive. He was such a lie that Herod tried to stop him. He was such a lie that he confounded the scholars in the temple. He was such a lie that sin tried to block him. Demons tried to stop him. But he got up. And you ought to be happy that he died for you. And I wonder sometimes when I look at people, I'm serious. I wonder sometimes when I look at people, I see them all excited about stuff. Stuff that money stuff. Trips and stuff. Material stuff. You ought to get to know him. Who died for you, who rose again, and who's coming back to get you. Give our king a hand. Stand all over this building. Give our king a hand. No, all over the building. Give our king a hand. Take about 30 seconds and tell him thank you. No, no, take about 30 seconds. Tell him thank you. Can't hear you, can't hear you. Tell him thank you. Because he could have called 10,000 angels, but he died alone just for you and me. And this is not a show. It's not a performance that we do on Easter. It's about my Savior who died for me. One Sunday morning, he met me like he met Mary. One Sunday morning, he met me like he met James. One Sunday morning, he met me like he met the men on the road to Emmaus. One Sunday morning, he met me at my lowest point and he changed my life. And the God that changed me, he can change you. But you got to want him to. You got to want him to. You got to stop playing. You got to stop playing and performing. Jesus can say to the utmost those who come to him by faith.